oh, don't panic, you people down here. I'm not finishing with a stage dive. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see how it goes. Uh, if you've seen me before, uh, you're going to be thinking he's lost some weight. Uh, whereas if you haven't, you'll be thinking, how fat was he? Uh, I was pretty fat, to be fair. Uh, no, not even other fat people would shag me. Uh, yeah, I'm from Swansea originally. Uh, I live in England now. Uh, little town, I know. Uh, little, little town called Basingstoke. The first day I was there, I was you know, walking down the high street and I see a, a news agent, a sign outside a news agent. It's an A board advertising the local newspaper, you know, and they've got the name of the paper at the top and how often it comes out at the bottom and in between they write the headline for the day. But what I saw was the whole sign. Girl of 12 murdered every Monday, Wednesday and Friday. <laughs> now, that's a bit of an aggressive approach to preventing teenage pregnancy. But it is proactive. So, um, so they get, I mean, when I first moved there, I mean, I still get this. Now, now, you know, I run into English people and they ask me if I can speak Welsh. Fact is, I can't, and I've given up trying because I think I'm bringing the language into disrepute. I, tr I try too hard and I overdo it on the messy consonants and end up sounding like the elephant man and finishing a milkshake. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Rob Hughes. That's Hughes, H U G H E S. It's a fairly typical bog standard Welsh name. I'm sure you'll agree, but you'd be amazed how many ways there are to f it up. I ordered a taxi home from the pub one night. The guy on the end of the phone said, what's the name? I said, Hughes, because I didn't see any point in lying about it. He said, Shoes? I said, no, Hughes. He said, Huge? I said, no, Hughes, H-U-G-H-E-S. 20 minutes later, the taxi arrived. The driver wound down the window and called out, Taxi for Shrewd! <laughs> Shrewd? Who's called Mr. Shrewd, for God's sake? Sounds like a failed Mr. Man, doesn't it? <laughs> it's been a difficult time for my wife and I lately. Uh, have some bad news, her father died this year, but she's not here, so we can laugh about it. <laughs> if you want. <laughs> but um, it was very difficult for me, because uh, his funeral fell on the day of the Six Nations Rugby Final. S selfish. I'm a big rugby fan, my wife knows this. She said, look, I know that you love rugby, but this is my father's funeral we're talking about. Why can't we compromise? How about we record it and we can watch it together in the evening? I said, all right. It's a bit morbid though, isn't it? <laughs> and do you really want to be carrying a camera around with you all day? <laughs> anyway, I went to the funeral, of course I did. When I got there, I saw a mother, she was dressed head to toe in black with a veil. She was bawling her eyes out. I looked at her, I said, morning. <laughs> as soon as I had said it, I realized how inappropriate it was. <laughs> it had gone 12 o'clock. I'd missed my window for the morning joke, which in hindsight is why I think she didn't laugh. So I was walking through the mystical lands of Port Talbot last week. It's quite a fascinating, wonderful and almost magical place. Because Port Talbot is the only place where you find more people than you do teeth. <laughs> and as I was walking through this mystical land, I was stopped by one of those peas. You've all seen them, haven't you? Those peas, they come up to you, don't they? Start telling you about their little problems in the land of the peas and their little charity for the peas. I said, I'm ever so sorry, sir. I already give to the carrots and the parsnips. I don't know if I can do another one of these. And he started telling me how important peas were and he had some valid points. So I said, all right, I'll give you two pounds a month. Gave this pea my account number and sort code. An hour later, 250 pounds had been taken out of my account. Went to the police station and said, what's going on here? This pea has just taken 250 pounds from me. Policeman said, well, that's no ordinary pea. I said, well, what kind of pea commits fraud? And he said, a scam pea. <laughs> Glad you enjoyed that one, Glee Club. <laughs> so I was walking uh, down the side of the road with my girlfriend, and uh, I turned to kiss her. And as I did, a group of boy racers drove past. And as I was kissing my girlfriend, they shouted, hey, dykes! Which is good, isn't it? Because that reminds me of a time when I was lucky enough to hear the greatest sentence ever said by a human being. I was walking towards a train station, and a man approached me all self-assured, and he said this. You right, love, though, it's a bloke. <laughs> In one continual sentence. You right, love, though, it's a bloke. And he did it, ladies and gentlemen, whilst making a perfect 45-degree angle. You right, love, though, it's a bloke. 
So, uh, I try to make myself look nice for you tonight. Do you mind if I put my drink down there, sir? No? Okay, great, thanks. Um, I try to make myself look nice for you tonight by uh, getting a tan. Hasn't quite worked out. I haven't quite got to the joke yet, so that's massively insulting what you all just did. Uh, I don't know if you can see this. I, I, I basically had like a V there. It was lovely. And up to here. And up to here. It was lovely. I basically had the tan line of the kind of man who spends his holidays with his arms crossed, asking waiters if they do chips. So my girlfriend just dumped me. <laughs> Speaking of rejection, uh, my friend, my male friend, refused to live with me in a two-bedroom house because he insisted that that would turn us gay. And I can kind of understand it because sexuality is a mysteriously formed thing and generally comes down to two factors, nature, nurture, or a combination of the two. But my friend seems to subscribe to a third and lesser known option, proximity. I take a girl out to a bar Tell her jokes and buy her drinks Then when I think the moment's right I get my balls out and ask what she thinks I'll invite a girl round to mine I make some couscous and open some wine We watch a documentary about kids with no tear ducts And by the end we're both crying That sounds pretty dull Yeah well, I agree, well, as long as you know. but then I've always got a girlfriend. And I haven't had sex since 2003. So get in touch with your feminine, feminine side. <laughs> Fill your bathroom with tea lights. Read Heat magazine. Like everything that she likes. Oh, come on, what if she likes And my... yes, that includes Michael Bublé. Oh my God. And what? celebrity dancing on ice. You're kidding Tell me. Tell her she's one, two, three times a lady. In other words, a lady thrice! Right, okay, I think I understand. Uh, you've got to be less of a man. Well, if you think you've got the idea... I think so, yeah. Why don't you take it from here? Okay, um, it's like I'm going to take a girl to a nice restaurant. Yeah. Make her pull out my chair. Okay. Spend the whole evening complaining that I've got nothing pretty to wear. So get in touch with your feminine inside. Regularly wash your towels. Ooh. Call people up just for a chat. For no reason. Learn more than five types of flowers. Tuck your genitals between your legs. So in the mirror you look like a lady. Start shaving off all of your body hair and asking your friends to call you Jennifer. Spend a fortune on liquid soap. Yes, so Or do your hair in braids. Hey, hey. Buy the sluttiest miniskirt you can find and wear it on a night out with the guys from work. Pull your line manager in a club and convince him you're very discreet. Then take him back to your flat, have sex with him, take pictures of his flaccid and post them on the internet. On the internet. Don't you think there's already enough on the internet? There's always room for one more. It's the internet. Well, I'd hate to see your browsing history. Now I'm in touch with my feminine side. Oh, you've taken this way too far. Now I'm in touch with my feminine side. You've completely I've been missed the f on the internet. Thank you, Thank you very much. We've been awesome, Louis. Cheers. Have a great night.